This is the OnePlus Nord. I really didn't expect to like this phone. If I'm being completely honest, it seemed like a weak OnePlus phone when I was hearing about it. A OnePlus phone that focuses on everything I don't care much about, like having a ton of cameras and having a 90 hertz screen, and then sacrifice on the thing that I care about most, power. Fortunately, I was wrong. I actually really like this phone. I'm Titus, and let's review the OnePlus Nord. Before we move forward, I wanna mention that I am a OnePlus brand ambassador, and I was one of 50 people in North America selected to review this phone. And to make things even murkier, OnePlus said the reviews that they like the most can actually keep the phone. With that said, I'm going to put that to the side and give you my real opinions when it comes to this phone. I'm just gonna go ahead and say OnePlus, I like the phone, but I don't need it, I will happily ship it back to you, just tell me where. I have a OnePlus 8 and I'm good with that. I don't need the Nord, but thanks for letting me review it. Speaking of which, let's review this thing. The Nord looks and feels premium. Comparing it to my OnePlus 8, there isn't a noticeable build quality gap between the two. By the way, I will be comparing my OnePlus 8 with the Nord quite a bit. Just because the OnePlus 8 is a premium offering from OnePlus with the best processor available for Android right now. I believe OnePlus sent me whatever they call their version of black, and it's pretty nice. Another nice touch is in the box, it included a nice rubber phone case, which has a pretty cool looking design on it. And out of the box, it already has a screen protector installed. So if you're budget conscious, those are two savings baked right in. I really like having a flat screen. I've had so many phones with a curved screen lately and it's really nice going back to a more classic flat. And the thing you'll notice immediately about the Nord is it has, I kid you not, six cameras on it. My OnePlus 8, which is a good bit more expensive, has four, three on the back and then just one on the front. Let's be real though. It's not about how many cameras you have but are they any good? There's four cameras on the back, so let's start there. You have one camera that's a little bit zoomed in, one that's more normal, a wide angle, and a macro. So it's actually kind of interesting. It goes all the way from being super zoomed in to literally being an inch away from the lens. With these first pictures, I wanted you to see the different focal range you can get with these lenses. So we're gonna start zoomed in, go to normal, and then to the wide angle. I think each of these pictures look really sharp. They're just really nice quality images, good color. It has nice clarity. It's really nice. I'm always impressed with the OnePlus cameras. I have an expensive camera I could bring with me everywhere, but I would definitely feel comfortable bringing this Nord with me instead and knowing I can get some good shots. It's not to say that this is unique to OnePlus. iPhone pictures look really good. Samsung's look really good as well. But I think when we're talking about quality images like these, it comes more down to your photography skills. That will make a much bigger difference than if you're using like an iPhone or a OnePlus or Samsung or whatever. But I will say with the Nord, it is really nice having a few different options with the focal range. There are definitely some times where I want to zoom in a little bit, and there's definitely some times I want to get a nice wide angle landscape. Those lenses are really nice, but the macro lens is where it gets a little weird. Don't get me wrong, I got some shots that look pretty neat with it, I guess, but the camera is a pretty low resolution of two megapixels, and you have to be within an inch to an inch and a half to use this feature properly. I guess what I'm saying is it's cool that you have a macro lens, but I have no plans on using it any further. Now the selfie cameras, I think those look really nice as well. There are two of them, which is pretty unique, and one of them is a normal and one is a wide angle. I will note that the first selfie picture I took with the Nord, I really wasn't impressed at all with it. I was in a room that had some light, but it wasn't really well lit, and the picture just didn't look sharp. It yeah, just didn't look good. Since then, I got an update on the Nord and it actually noted that it enhanced the selfie camera. And from what I'm seeing now, I can definitely tell a difference. This is a picture that was taken in a fairly dark room and you can see that it's not the sharpest image in the world, but it's definitely better than the first low light selfie image I took. And in terms of low light, the cameras on the back, I actually think do a better job. This is a picture I took in that exact same pretty dark room. I took a picture of one of my daughter's stuffed animals. And despite the fact that it's dark, you really can't tell looking at the image. So this is the camera running at 4K 30 frames per second. And I've never been super impressed with cell phone microphones, but you're hearing what this one sounds like right now. There's a lot of wind rushing around. This is what it looks like. This is what it sounds like. Same area, same everything. But now I've switched to the ultra wide camera. And that's what it looks like. And that's what it sounds like too. And this is now the selfie camera doing video. Um, this is what it looks like. 
It looks pretty good, but this is not 4K. They do not allow 4K with the front cameras. That's pretty normal for a lot of phones these days. Again, same area, same everything, but now I have switched to the ultra wide lens that you're looking at me through. Again, only allows 1080p, but it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, you could definitely vlog with something like this. It's pretty nice. So let's talk for a minute about how much of a performance hit you are getting when you use a mid-range Snapdragon chip like the one in the OnePlus Nord. Now let's compare that to the top of the line Snapdragon chip that is in the OnePlus 8. And using these benchmarks, you can definitely tell a difference in quality here. In the Geekbench 5 benchmark, the Nord scored a 604 in the single core versus 912 in the OnePlus 8. And in the multi-core, the Nord scored a 1942, whereas the OnePlus 8 scored a 3298. So if you take these benchmarks at their word, that kind of tells you that the Nord is gonna be somewhere around 60 to 70% as fast as a OnePlus 8. I also wanted to measure the graphics, so I did the Slingshot benchmark, and I got a score of 45.55 for the Nord, whereas the OnePlus 8 got a score of 89.81. So in terms of graphical power, it scored about half what the OnePlus 8 scored. And all of this should be noticeable, right? Since these scores are so night and day, you would think that you would immediately notice the performance difference between the Nord to the OnePlus 8. And that's the weird thing though, it really didn't. Scrolling around the home screen, opening different apps, browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, all the things I would do on my OnePlus 8, I really just didn't notice that much of a speed difference. Now OnePlus does claim that they did some software optimizations to help you not really notice the speed difference that much in the Nord. And if that's true, they definitely knocked it out of the park because you really can't tell the speed difference until you actually use these devices side by side. I opened up CNET and yeah, the 8 was just a tad bit quicker, but not an insane amount of time quicker. I also did this with IGN, which is another pretty meaty website and same result. Also did a test with YouTube because I watch a lot of YouTube. I clicked the same exact video and they loaded up identically. Again though, the 8 is generally faster, but it's not super noticeable. And in some ways it's just as fast. And even with gaming, the speed difference wasn't that crazy. I spent a few hours playing PUBG, Fortnite, Call of Duty, all on both the OnePlus 8 and the Nord going back and forth. Oddly enough, the gaming performance with those games on both these devices were pretty similar. And before you ask, I did make sure that they were both using the same graphical settings for all these games. With PUBG, I noticed it was a little bit smoother on the 8, but the Nord was definitely playable. It wasn't a huge performance difference here. Call of Duty looked and played great on both these devices. I really couldn't tell much of a difference on either of these devices. In fact, this one seems to be the best performing game out of these three. Fortnite was definitely the worst. It's weird that they capped the frame rate at 30 frames per second, or at least I didn't see a way to disable that and the whole game just looks kind of pixely and not super smooth. I will say it is playable on both, but the 8 definitely seemed a little more smooth and less laggy. This really surprised me, and I've been trying to think of how to explain this, and my guess is that the devs that make these games want these games to perform well on a variety of devices, so maybe they're just dumbing down the graphics a little. Not sure, just a theory. If you guys know of a popular game that would be a better test, let me know in the comments below. When picking the games to test on these phones, I was trying to pick popular 3D games that I thought would really push these phones. I will note that the Nord can play my favorite game with flying colors though. This is Retro Bowl and it's a game I'm kind of addicted to. It's a really simple football game. I was kind of getting sick of Madden and this game is simple, but it has a lot of depth to it. Not sponsored by the way, I just like this game. So if you're wondering about price, this Nord costs about 500 euros, which converts to about $570. And you might be thinking, euros? We'll talk about that later. But what else do they include in that price tag? Well, for one, you have an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is something I've always liked on OnePlus since they started doing this way back with the 6T. Also, I really love the display. It's 2400 pixels by 1080, and it looks really great. It's 90 hertz, so it's really smooth if you compare it to a normal smartphone like an iPhone SE or something like that. One thing I always really like about OnePlus, and they do it here too with the Nord, is they always put a lot of RAM in their phones. With the Nord, it starts out at eight gigs, but it goes all the way up to 12 gigs, which is a ton of RAM. I really like that because I feel that RAM really helps phones age well. As apps gets more and more demanding, having more RAM helps you have a little bit of breathing room. 
The Nord also starts out at 128 gigs of storage, which I think is plenty. The Nord also has Oxygen OS, which is OnePlus's flavor of Android, which includes game mode, which I really like. It does a good job of not allowing notifications to interrupt your game, and you just kind of see them as plain text above your game. It even has a built-in screen recorder, which I think is nice to have. And from what I've seen, OnePlus even claims that the Nord can be wet, but it doesn't have as much waterproofing as the OnePlus 8 has, for instance. The Nord even has fast charging, which OnePlus always does a great job with. And the audio quality coming straight from the phone itself is not stereo, it's just one speaker on the bottom. I think it sounds fine and it's plenty loud, but it doesn't have that quality sound that you get from a OnePlus 8 with those stereo speakers, but it gets the job done. And I think loudness is much more important here. Oh, and it's 5G, so it's future-proofed, which it's pretty cool. Okay, where do I land on the OnePlus Nord? I definitely like it, but let's play a game where we pretend that's available to purchase in North America. Because that's right, it's not available to purchase if you live in the United States or in Canada. I gotta say that is a little odd considering that OnePlus wanted people from North America to review it, but anyway. So if it was available here, would I get it over the OnePlus 8? The OnePlus 8 starts out at 699 with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, just so you know. And let's just pretend that the Nord is available for $570 with those same exact specs of 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. And I gotta say, that is really tough choice because that's an extra $120. Is that performance jump worth $120. And yeah, I think I want that extra performance. Listen, I know that it's barely noticeable between these two in a lot of ways, but I have to imagine that the OnePlus 8 will age better as games and apps get more demanding. But again, I don't think that performance makes a huge difference. But me, like, fast. Now the Nord is a series of phones that OnePlus is working on and they did say in the future there will be a Nord device available in North America. It just probably won't be this one. So I think why they wanted myself and other people from North America to review the Nord was so we can give some suggestions. So here it goes. I think it would be nice to have two flavors of the Nord. One just like the Nord as it is today with a mid-range tip and a ton of really nice features. And I think there should be another Nord. Let's call it the Power edition. You know what, OnePlus? You guys are way better at this naming stuff. I'm, I'm gonna leave that one to you. But I think that this other OnePlus Nord device should lose some of those frills like having six cameras, for instance. Come on, guys. That's insane. It's nice, but I would be happy with just one nice camera on the front and one nice camera on the back. But what I want most is the most powerful chip available in this Nord device. And I would like it to cost quite a bit less than the other flagship OnePlus devices. You know, it's funny, it's, I'm actually kind of describing the OnePlus One that released forever ago. That's kind of how they launched the whole OnePlus brand. Yes, that is actually what I want. I want today's version of the OnePlus One. And you have to remove a couple other frilly features like the fingerprint sensor or waterproofing. I'm cool with that. That's totally fine with me if you just pass me along the savings. A device like that would definitely attract somebody like me. And I'm of the demographic where I'm a cheapskate, but I like a lot of power for the money. I'm that demographic. But what do you guys think? What would you like the Nord series to ultimately become? And what do you think about this Nord right here? If you live outside of the US, is this something that you're gonna purchase or you already have purchased? And if you do live in the US or in Canada, if this was here, would you be interested in this Nord? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your opinion. I know that my last several videos have been OnePlus related videos and that has not been intentional by the way. My next video will be reviewing the Fire HD8 tablet from Amazon. I kind of got behind on that tablet. I've been meaning to review it for a while and I have a bunch of other videos that are tech related that kind of focus on getting tech that it's good bang for the buck coming down the pike. Please subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss those videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Titus, by the way, and I'll see you next time.